that had 500 or more people, about 500 in worship, and a million-dollar budget, two-thirds of those churches had people who were functionally in the executive pastor role. So we're talking about a lot of, a lot of churches now in the U.S. It, but I find there are three pressures on all church leaders. One is pressure, especially COVID and post-COVID, due to conflicting points of view. And we've taken the view that I believe the Bible is true, which then we kind of come down to, I believe my views about the Bible are true, which then my views are true, which means that you should do what I want. And then that puts pressure on the pastor because you have two competing views, mask, no mask, vaccine, no vaccine, just to cite recent issues. Then there are time pressures because pastoral roles can be 24 seven. It will eat you alive, and then the church will be the ones who cry the most at your funeral. So wow. um, there's time pressures, and then there's the scope of the role. It can cover senior pastor, lead pastor, executive pastor, uh, can cover everything in the church, from pre- preventing slips and falls to preventing child abuse, to budgets, to staff races, the leadership with the staff and board, just to measure a few. So those are some pressures of time, of points of view and scope of the role that just makes it really hard for people to stay focused on the task. And at times their integrity can get compromised when they cut corners. Uh, Yeah, no, I hear you. I think those are some tremendous pressures, you know, that we see church leaders facing. And I think, yeah, like you, uh, you know, definitely share that burden as well. And yeah, I think that gets into even a, a good question too, David, just around, Maybe maybe it's those pressures. Maybe there's some other elements to the mix as well. But are there any particular patterns, you know, that you might see, especially, yes, we live in a day and age where it seems like we're seeing, hearing about, you know, all too many of these uh, leadership integrity failures. Um, you know, can you speak to maybe even some potential patterns uh, or warning signs that you might see? Well, let me give you the three biggest ones. First would be burnout due to stress. And where we see stress is often in vocal snaps and fits, where the person pretty quickly says, oh, Michael, I'm so sorry I said that. Wow. But it happens more often than the person cares to admit in a variety of situations. It's showing that on the inside, things aren't well. The rubber band, you know, you can stretch a rubber band so far before it snaps. And that person is snapping more and more often. And kind of the solution there is you've just got to guard one day and seven rests. It's biblical from the principle of creation. Don't want to call it a law, but it's the principle. If it was good enough for God to rest, it's good enough for us to rest. Another aspect of that is many folks are not taking what I call think time. This is a Mm. time, hopefully every day, a half an hour to an hour, to think about the next day and the next month and the next six months and really get ahead of issues so that you're not stressed out when these things come up. So that would be the first one, Michael, would be burnout due to stress. A second one would be burnout due to money. Uh, Perhaps the church isn't paying enough. And I'm talking about fair local wages. Look and find what your school teachers are making. Most pastors make what a high school teacher makes. Most church leaders make what a vice principal or principal makes, sometimes district officials for large churches. So pay reasonably. But you also want to, this leads into the next one, we always need to be on the alert for fraud. It's fairly easy to disguise. You can hide it from the auditor. You can hide it from ECFA because you do some bookkeeping irregularities. I like to have the discussion regularly because it it raises up with everyone in the organization Fraud is, is something we're always looking at and looking out for. Fraudsters hate the discussion, and it's the best prevention about, against fraud. And then you look for irregularities. So, Michael, how'd you buy that Lamborghini? That's pretty great on the salary of the ECFA president. Well, I got an inheritance. Okay. Um, you know, that's what Aldrich Ames said, that his wife, he's the CIA mole in the 90s, wow. and he said it was family money. But people close to him knew that his wife didn't have any family money. So you just ask questions, you raise the issues. What we, what we want to do is just normalize discussions. 
Michael, you're kind of tense today. I've seen that a couple of times this week. Am I willing to put my relationship with you at risk, even as, as an, if I was an employee, because I care more about you than I do about my job? And those kind of employees are next to never fired because they ask it nicely. The person understands they care more about them. And if we can catch something small, it won't become something big. Wow. We could end right there. <laughs> I think that gives us all enough homework, but man, there's so much to actually unpack there too. David, what is... Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more finance, governance, and fundraising news and insights for your church or ministry.